Hey guys, it's Chris, and today is a good day. As you saw in my previous video attempts, I had some really weird issues with some random uh, writing and crappy stuff happening to the file system and blah blah blah, all these issues. So, what we got here is we have the vampire back installed with a little uh, board. I'm going to zoom in on it here. It's a, where are you, SD, whoa, to a 44 pin ID. You can see I got a 2 gig card in there. It has a little light on it. It has a hard drive light, activity light. So right now it's just resting over. Yes, I know the HDMI cable is this way. Um, I do have a 3D printed zip tied slot for the back that just has a coupler in it. And that is going to be my rear out when I put this in, I have a 90 degree that goes below the case line, so that's great. So what we got here is on this 2 gig card, I partitioned a 1 gig DH0 and a 1 gig DH1. It is OS 3.9. Uh, I don't have anything great on it. I just built it. There's nothing. There's literally nothing on here. I haven't loaded it back up. The reason I, I wanted to go over like, whoops. I wanted to go over like what happened with all of these cards because as you saw I had like 25 different cards going on and I want to show you what it was. It was the cheap ass adapters I bought. Even the StarTech.com had these issues. I was running them on the data flyer uh, board and I'll show you that without the cabling on it. So, two things, three things. One, all of our Amigas are like 25 plus years old. All of these suckers are 20 to 25 years old. This data flyer, this is an expansion systems data flyer IDE, but the problem with this the whole time was this capacitor is pooped out. I can't even get in close enough to focus. So, I was having all these crazy problems, A, because of caps, I did the board, I didn't do this thing. Two, this is the original cable, it is fine, right, it's a 40 pin, it's not the Ultra DMA. Two, these cheap adapters, these Chinese turds, while they worked fine on certain controllers, like the old uh, data flyer at times, I think when that cap went bad, something bit the farm and gave me all these issues and the vampire would do strange things with sand disk cards so no matter what I tried CF uh, micro SD whatever sand disk cards crapped out transcends they work pretty good now I was using transcends with the data flyer so that's when I bought that super expensive uh, one for which we're going to do right now. So I'm going to take this card out and it actually has a spring click remover. That's the 39. This is Coffin R54. So we're just going to close this. We're going to turn it right back on. You'll see it on the HDMI screen. So I'll pan up a little bit and then we'll go over the different settings on your vampire that I know of. And uh get the cover back on this puppy. So we have sound. As you heard, I have sound. Um, let me turn this overhead light off. So as you can see, I have two monitors here. All the overhead lights are off except for the little 100 watt light bulbs above my head. I have one in the back and one in the front. Anyway, you're going to notice this monitor is off. Coffin R54 uses the RTG or retargetable graphics to give you a higher resolution than was ever possible on your little 24-bit cards or opals or Picassos now. It uses the Picasso drivers, but it's HDMI, numerous resolutions. I have mine set up the way I like it. You can change the background and you can see it has a total listing of the chip RAM the version, chip RAM, fast RAM, and graphics. I don't know what that is about. 
when you're in the Vampire and you right click, you have all these little different menus. First, you have Power, and it has two reboot options. You have Reboot Now or Reboot in the Maintenance Mode. There's a little secret hidden partition on the on Coffin that gives you like this safe mode where you can go and do P3FS Doctor or PS, P, yeah, P3FS Doctor. Um, you can open the change log, the repositories. Um, you have your startup configs where you can edit your user startup and your startup sequence. Um, your WHD load configs uh, for start, post, cleanup, your preferences, your boot sounds you can turn on and off, your executive layers, layer 45. Now, what is layers 45? Layers 45 is your layer library. The original one in OS 3.1 had issues for display. I have layers 45 turned on. So my windows open extremely fast. Now I haven't went through and snapshotted every directory, um, but there's a layer test where it would draw every window of every file folder that you had, and it would time it in comparison to the original layers library. There's a YouTube video on the guy that wrote it. Check it out. I'll try and put a link in the description. And well, that's the layers library. It helps with your window opening. Um, and your backup and restore. You can back up your configuration. Oops. You can back up your configuration to the uh, secondary partition DH2, which you can't see. Um, your different preferences, workbench pattern, workbench time, theme, screen mode, blah, 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 palette, look out, your main preference files. The vampire settings. Whoa, these are some cool stuff. The fast IDE here. This is where you can actually turn the speed of your hard drive up. Um, Right now I'm on speed zero. It says disabled, but it's just the speed of the IDE 44 pin off of the Vampire. Um, in this, I'll, we'll do it live. So we're in zero. So we're gonna go to programs, and I'll keep this close to the thing. We'll just do benchmarks, and we're gonna do sysinfo, uh, the beta version. Okay, so we're running sysinfo beta. It says right here it's a beta. It's running on the production monitor or the VGA or RGB. Um, so we're going to go into drives as a baseline here. DH0, we're going to say speed. It should be around 3 or 4 or 5. Okay, 3. 2.9. Now watch this. I'm going to zoom out so you can see what I do. So that's one disabled. We're going to click exit and quit. Vampire will come back on on the RTG. I'm literally going to go vampire. Let's say change your hard drive speed. Vampire, fast IDE, and we're just going to go to one. It says safe for hard drive. We'll do two. We'll do one. And then we're going to rerun sysinfo, which shows back up over here saying it's a beta. And then we're going to go to drives again, DH0 speed. Now we're at from three to seven. Now, you got to have a kick-ass card. The Transcends will do like 10. So I'm pretty good on this one. But the, the one I got in here is Ultra 1000. It'll do faster than the Vampire can do. So once again, that was Vampire setting 1. So now we're going to go 2. Run Sysinfo again. Back over to the monitor. We're going to go to Drives. DH0. Speed. Now it's at 9. Pretty good, huh? Exit. Quit. Back to the Vampire. Final step. Vampire Fast IDE 3. Now these are written to... We're on Sysinfo. These are written into the utility, into the card itself, into the FPGA config. So it's not like you got to select this every time. If you set it, it's set it and forget it. Now we're going to go Drives, DH0, Speed... 9.4 so 9.4 on my setting of the vampire that was level 3 so I usually just leave it around level 1 I mean it's obliterately fast as is and let's do this so on coffin now coffin comes loaded with everything you could actually imagine it comes with scum VM it comes with a fully configured shapeshifter all the emulators, PlayStation, uh, games, WHD load with like a freaking ton of games. I mean, 2D, 3D, benchmarks, demos, uh, 
Super Nintendo, UAE, uh, MSX, uh, FPSE, Magic 64, Game Boy, Neo Geo, Fusion, MAME, uh, PC Test, Pocket, Super Nintendo, Shapeshifter, uh, um, but there's a lot of, lot of, like, stuff, like, cool stuff, you ever played Gloom, you ever play Heretic, Hexen 2, uh, Duke Nukem, have you ever played Wolfenstein on an Amiga? I mean, you can play Wolfenstein on the Amiga. I mean, Doom, Quake, like everything. I'm going to turn my vent back to uh, 2. There's tons of games, and this isn't even the WHD load. The WHD load's here. And it just, it just, it just, it's crazy. Like, there's so many games. Like, A through Z. Like, uh, I don't know, take your pick. There's like, you gotta view these in list. It's so many. Come on. Like, that's just V. I mean, everything is in here. It's fully loaded. It's ready to rock. It's crazy. I mean, how many thousands of games do you need? 3,373 on this one iGame. That's not why I'm here. Um... When I first got the coffin set up and fired it up, a Taylor Swift video popped up on my screen. I don't know why it popped up on my screen. I didn't click anything. As soon as I set up the vampire, as soon as I set up the networking, um, this happened. <laughs> I don't want a copyright strike, but you know the girl, you know the video, and yeah. I'm getting a resolution mismatch because I put mine in PAL and uh... So, as you can tell, it boots up really quick. It's native to this. 90% uh, of the programs for the Vampire for Coffin are all included in here. So you're not going to have a lot of RTG or to RGB, RTG, RGB. Your production monitor is most likely going to be your HDMI at all times and uh, this is doing it no justice it's just hard to zoom in um, the next settings on the vampire are the network settings and it's very simple it's just got a uh, online offline connect on boot manage your interfaces uh, sync the clock any wireless configs Dropbox um, Google Drive and a Samba network share um, you can also reset the, the standard Amiga tools are always available too with the icons, the window, everything that's the 3139 ish. Uh, Coffin is based off of OS 3.9 and all the Boyden bags with improvements for the libraries and the other things that the Vampire uses, needs uh, memory optimization, all the cool board functions. The guys at Team Apollo have done a freaking kick ass job. The logo, the bat, the chick that boots up, the coffin dude with his little taking his little mask off, or it's just it's incredible. Uh, great job, and their coffins are behind him on his cape over here. Uh, what else comes on it? You get like the Amadoc style toolbar. Um, it has the different web browsers. Uh, I think it says eyebrows, and you know I'm online with it. Oh, one thing that it does. Um, come with it comes with a demo version of Roadshow if you don't want to run Roadshow you don't have to you can still run Amit TCP and a couple others through uh, the normal way but it will not have the menu interfaces at the top functionality like Roadshow does and it's not expensive it was like 30 bucks uh, so continuing on you have a disk image which does your ADFs and uh, CD-ROM, virtual CD-ROMs, PC cards. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. There is a uh, on the Vampire board underneath your map ROM. There is a mount, unmount micro SD. So if you click this, hey, guess what? I got to show up. Remember, I couldn't get these cards to mount. Well, now they mount, and there's files in them, and you can drag and drop crap. And I just store stuff in there. Uh, different stupid little utilities and videos and crap like that and when you're done with the card you just go up to the vampire menu and you say unmount and it disappears 
and that is the Saga SD dot device which is the micro SD physically on the vampire it's right now currently just for storage you can't boot off of it but hopefully after the 3.0 AGA core comes out that'll be nice but there is a beta for the AGA core uh, which you can look and on the Apollo Team Apollo website but it is only in RGB there is no RTG HDMI uh, which is fine by me because this is awesome but I'm used to Amigas and crappy resolution minimal colors because this is an ECS machine so I'm at 16 colors I'm not an AGA um, but I am with this and beyond uh, continuing on the menu system you can get your serial number turtle mode which turns on and off the boost super scalar I don't know map ROM if you're going to map your ROM to memory, uh, excuse me, if you're going to map your ROM to memory and the fast IDE is what we already went through with the boost speeds uh, network on and off. We did that in the regular Windows uh, menu windows for Workbench. Uh, with the stuff on the toolbar, we already went over the two emulators. This is Snoop DOS, so if you don't know what Snoop DOS is, if you have any crazy things going on, like if I double click on something and go to stuff and run something, not C, let's run a tool like uh, NetWizard and cancel. Snoop DOS intercepts all actions of your Amiga to tell you what is going on, exactly what happened, requesters execute, icon X, what it was doing, in case you have anything. Uh, I, I didn't click, okay, I, I clicked cancel so you can see what it happened everything that it did so that's kind of neat if you're troubleshooting uh, different aspects of a problematic uh, Amiga like mine always tends to be and as you notice we haven't had any problems now I don't want to curse myself but it's been about three weeks since I did the other videos that I think I just posted well yesterday for for me I don't know when you're watching this one but uh, the video where I was comparing all the SD cards was about three weeks ago from what we're doing right now. This is a uh, quick button to sysinfo. It's the 4.0 version. Uh, that would be right here. Let's zoom in a little bit. And many of you may know these icons. So the little gear here, that's sysinfo. Uh, this is Scum VM, which is a PC games emulator your rival movie player uh, I think this is Amiga Amp yes so that's Amiga Amp MP3 player and uh, it works great we'll, we'll grab some MP3s in a second um, but here this is a fully configured shapeshifter so all you have to do alright we're just going to cut it and it's already up you saw how fast that loaded it literally loaded. Oh, I chose 7.5. I thought I chose 8.0. Maybe I was screwing around with the configs. So, I mean, everything works. You want to play uh, Wolfenstein? So, like, you could play Wolfenstein 3D. Sound, everything. My water heater's off now, so it's not crazy. I'll just bring them on. And it loads. So, we're going to do Amiga Q, and we're not going to save. And I didn't increase the resolution, I didn't set it, because I am emulating Wolfenstein in an emulated Mac on a Amiga with an FPGA Vampire 68080. Um, but the full games are here. Leisure Suit Larry 1, 5, 6, Prince of Persia, Sim City, Sim Farm, Sim Tower, Sword of Sodan, Theme Park, Tube the, like Duke Nukem, like everything, Duke Nukem 3D, it's a 68K one. Uh, you need to have a CD. Okay, let's try this one. Boom. Sound familiar? Yes. It's time to kick A and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of gum. How's that? Is that pretty good? So anyway, that's the Mac. And when you're done with the Mac, you just do special shutdown, and you're immediately back to the Amiga side. I love Shapeshifter. The discs on the Amiga work in the Mac and they're only you know 880k Amiga so it's still nice um, 
Then you have the next on the list is Scum VM, which is a Windows E, like a Windows uh, emulator, like Leave Suit Larry 6, Monkey Island 2, Quest for Glory, Simon the Sorcerer, Zach McCracken, and the Alien Mindbenders, and they all work. Uh, then you have your Riva GUI, which is what we played the Taylor Swift video on. You have Amiga MP3 player, which does play MP3s no problem. Rage Against the Machine. This volume on this TV sucks, and I don't want to get a copyright strike. Neat. It works great. And Amiga Q, all the regular original uh, keys work fine. Um, and like I said, I didn't have any MP3s on here. That's what it came with. And then you have the uh, edit pad, which is a simple text editor like uh, Edit, ED, Vi, uh, different various ones, Cygnus editor. Uh, it does have a really good Cygnus editor in the programs. I mean, it's everything you can think of. Final Writer, TurboCalc, Wordsworth, Directory Opus. There is a Cygnus in here. I found it. Here it is, Cygnus editor. Everything. Cygnus editor professional 4.2. I love this program. I love it. And, like, whatever you can think of is on here. Emulators, demos, I mean, everything. You could screw around with this for hours. And look at the time. We're already 30 minutes in, and we're just doing just what is on Coffin. It's incredible. 3D, Lightwave, Cinema 4D, uh, Point of View Ray, 2D, Deluxe Paint, Image effects, perfect paint, photogenics. I don't use photogenics. You got fractals, Cast Pro, Mandelbrot generators, Fractal, Mandel Square. I mean, Internet, MFTP, AmaMail, IRC, SSL, Ama Trade Center, FTP, AWeb, C Manager, Dizzy Torrent, FTP, Eyebrows, Miami, M Miami, huh? MUIWig, NetSurf, uh, another FTP, Remote Desktop, Roadshow, TCP/IP, Simple Mail, SMB Mounter, VNC, Twit. Wookie Chat, another Amiga mailer. I mean, this SOB is fully loaded. There's a bunch of programming languages in here. The Scum VM, uh, five different versions of it. A bunch of tools. It's fully loaded with every utility you're ever going to need to do your workbenching like you've never been able to do it before. So that's a quick overview of Coffin. I didn't go through every option. You have, you have directory opus for the good one not the workbenchy replacement one the good one that's coffin r54 on the vampire we went through all of its settings and uh we've already been through my amiga so many times all i have is the network card in here now and the vampire and the ide board and i'll turn this off and in case you're wondering this is just some generic knockoff uh SD to 44 pin board, no pass through, there's going to be no DVD in here. This is a Lexar uh, X1032 gig. You just saw we had the Lexar in here, so I'm going to put that right here. This is my original Transcend. This is a SanDisk Ultra uh, 80 meg plus SDHC class V10 HC1 32 gigabyte card. It has the exact same coffin on it, the exact same. So I am inserting the card. No trickery, no nothing. Card in, laying down, card in, turning the Amiga on. Let me get this light off. Watch. It'll crash the vampire. It just, logo will come on, and it'll just, it'll just crash. Watch. Poop. Look, look at what did. See that? Look at this. And it'll continue to reboot and crash and reboot and crash. 37K of graphics mem and 3, what was that, 3 megs? 3K of other RAM? Uh, yeah. Awesome. Totally crashes it. I don't freaking know what's going on with that. 24 gig. Can't even open that one. Yeah. Where's my vampire stuff? I don't know. Isn't that crazy? That's SanDisk. I think Apollo should get rid of SanDisk as compatibility on their shit altogether. Because that sucks eggs. Turn this back on. 
and it'll boot right up in the coffin. No problem. Watch, the hard drive light's lit. It's going to remap. So here's the remap. And boom. We're right back where we left off. I don't know, man. I love you, SanDisk. Something's up. You're causing a lot of people problems. So that's it. It's the end of my rant. Before I sign off again, this is the Transcend 1 gig. Um, I got my BBS on here and a couple other things. And this is my workbench, how I used to use it back in the day. Uh, so this one has Miami. And... Uh, and Amiga Explorer and whatever. I usually use it for Amiga Explorer. Boink. It's working fine. This is a Transcend card. And uh, it's been working really well. Final data, final copy, final writer, uh, stuff, Magic Workbench, the Saga driver, which I could do RTG if I wanted to, but I don't. Um, workbench startup, my Miami Magic Menu and the Title Clock, AWeb, different things, my tools, stuff. This was just my BBS drive. Now we'll do Cine Control No Icon, and it will load my. Uh, TCP IP stack and I can tell that into my BBS and rock on uh, so right now I have the you know log on blah 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 five mail items whoops so cool BBS online everything's rolling um, it's been working fine transcend or Lexar do not purchase SanDisk cards. Can't explain it enough. You saw my headaches. SanDisk, man. PNY wasn't any better either. So, Transcend or Lexar. I say Lexar. I've never had any problems with them. Thanks for watching. Again and again. And I think this will be it.